Hey everyone, uh, this is hopefully going to be a quick video um, on uh, cloning your hard drive. Um, I was in a situation where I was upgrading my primary OS uh, hard drive to a uh, newer uh, um, hard drive um, and I was going for, uh, actually from an, an SSD to another SSD um, in a kind of a strange, um, you know, scenario where I was actually, for some people they might say I'm actually downgrading, but uh, I don't really feel that I am. I was I moved from a Samsung uh, 850 Pro to a Samsung 850 Evo, and the main reason I did that was I wanted more hard drive space, but I didn't want to have to spend the premium just to have a pr the Pro uh, Samsung uh, hard drive, which doesn't offer much performance performance difference uh, now uh, with the newer Evos. Um, so uh, I actually was moving from a Samsung 850 Pro 256 gigabyte hard drive and I purchased a Samsung 850 Evo 500 gig so I was I'm getting more space essentially um, which is you know always a good thing. Um, and there's a there was a big difference in price uh, if I was to get the 500 gig version of the of the Pro and I mean once you're in that you know speed range you know unless you're looking at the raw numbers and benchmarks you're not going to notice any any difference so space is was more the concern for me but I didn't want to have to uh, you know install my programs again and do all the setup you know that's a that takes like for me anyway, a whole freaking day. And uh, so I use Clonezilla. Um, so I wanted to, uh, to introduce this. I'm sure a lot of people know about it. Um, there's a lot of other different programs out there that you can use, but Clonezilla for me is quite frankly the simplest. Um, so you go to Clonezilla um, and you have option to download uh, you know, Clonezilla onto a, a CD or DVD um, or USB. I did it by USB. So um, over here you have um, your your areas to download. Now there's different versions that you can um, download here. So you have to be aware on the kind of system that you have. So for me, I actually had to use the alternative stable because, and I think a lot of people are going to have to use that version. Uh, because uh, if you have a UE UEFI uh, motherboard, um, you're going to want to use the alternative stable. Um, and uh, more specifically, um, you're going to want to use the 64-bit um, version because um, you know you most likely have a 64-bit CPU. Um, it just basically allows the the program to use more. Uh, CPU and and things like that to make the process a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna boot into Clonezilla, kind of give you the overview and how I did it. For my scenario, is the the quickest. Um, so I'm gonna boot into Clonezilla. So this is the screen you're brought to, and in Clonezilla, and you're gonna want to select the two RAM boot to media option. And so from there, you're brought into uh, Clonezilla itself, and you have to select a language. So by selecting to RAM, Clonezilla is actually being run from your RAM, so um, I, you probably could even take out the USB drive if, if, if you wanted to because it, it's actually now in RAM, uh, but you know, I'm not going to do that. I don't even know if that's possible, but um, yeah, so we're going to go with English, obviously. Um, this option, you're just going to go with the default, which is don't touch key map. And then you're gonna wanna click uh, start clone start clonezilla. This is where I do things a little bit different from um, from like the other videos and tutorials that I've seen online. Most people will tell you to use device image. So basically, what that does is um, it's gonna make a clone copy of whatever hard drive it is that you want, and it's gonna save it on to another hard drive. So you know, normally that would be like an external hard drive or even an, if you have an internal hard drive that's, you know, big enough that you can save the image to, you could also do that. Um, so this process by far is, is, takes longer because, I mean, think about it. If, if you're upgrading your hard drive and you're cloning it, you know, unless you have another SSD that's really big that you're going to, you know, save the image to, 
um, you're probably going to have to do this over USB or or even if you have like a 7200 RPM or 5400 RPM drive that you're saving the image to, uh, that's going to take longer because you're, you're, you're saving it to a mechanical hard drive and then you're restoring from it. So f for me, I do device to device because this option basically says, okay, you have you have the two hard drives hooked up, you know, and you're basic. It's going to copy the source hard drive directly onto the target drive. Um, so there's no saving or and and restoring. It's it's basically doing everything in one. Um, now the only thing with this option is you can only really you can only really do device to device if you're if you're going from a smaller hard drive to a bigger hard drive. So in my case. I'm going from 256 gigabytes to 500 gigs. So device device makes sense. Devi device device does not make sense if you're going from like a 500 gigabyte hard drive to a 256 gigabyte hard drive. So by far device device is the is the best option you're going you're going to want to use uh, because it, it eliminates saving your your hard drive image onto an external hard drive or another hard drive and then having to restore that image to your, you know, your new hard drive. Um, this is the quickest option, um, especially if you're going from SSD to SSD. I mean, I'm not, I can't show you the process because I've already done it, but it, it, was, it literally took a few minutes and th because that's just, you know, how fast SSDs are, right? Especially the, the, the Samsungs. Um, so yeah, normally you'd go device device and then you would go into the beginner mode. I'm not going to go through this whole process because I don't want to have to do all this again. But normally you'd go into uh, beginner mode. And then this is where, you know, you have a few other options. So disk to local disk is going to be the one that you're going to want to use. Um, in some cases, you, you might use disk to remote disk. But most people are going to use disk to local disk so that basically is saying you're you know you're the two disks are you know physically in the in the in on uh, attached to the system um so then you would select that and then it's going to give you a list of all your hard drives right so in this process it wants you to select your existing source drive so this you want to pick the drive that you want to copy all the contents on and then the next screen is going to show you where you want, where the target disk is. And then once you go through that option, <clears throat> you're, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. The steps are, are written out very clearly. Um, and like I said, it, it takes like no time. So I thought I would quickly at least show you the, the hard drive in terms of how it performs. And I actually did a run already, so it saved my previous... Uh, uh, results so you can see it's it's essentially meeting uh, its stats uh, and specifications uh, in fact in this test at least with the sequential read and sequ sequential write um, it's actually going over the the, the, the specs um, the random read and the random writes they they never ever seem to uh, to get up to you know that those magic numbers that uh, that they say they should, um, at least um, not uh, with a single uh, hard drive. Um, there's that. Uh, if I were to use rapid mode, you know, these stats would look even better. But I I don't I don't really place much importance on rapid mode. Uh, I don't think it actually. I think it makes your benchmarks look good like this, but. Um, in actual real usage, it doesn't offer uh, any you know noticeable difference, and um, in fact, it actually takes away up to four gigabytes of your system memory uh, in order to run it. So I mean, if if you have like eight gigabytes of of system RAM, well, you know you're basically allowing Rapid to take away up to four gigs um, if it has to. Um, so whereas that memory could be use, useful in other situations like gaming or, you know, video editing or, or something like that. So, um, like even, even I have 16 gigabytes of memory, but, you know, even taking away up to four gigs, you know, that doesn't leave 
me with as much memory as I would like, um, you know, with doing uh, with doing other things. So, yeah, I don't I don't recommend enabling rapid mode personally. Um, over over provisioning, I do have turned on. Uh, I don't want to click it because every time I do, it seems to do some loading thing, like it's checking to you know to see how much I've you know set to. But I've set to the recommended ten percent, um, and essentially ten percent takes away about forty gigs of of uh, hard drive space. Uh, but you know, it's worth it in terms of you know I have five hundred gigs, and the only real thing I have on the on the main hard drive is my OS and system programs and not so many games and things like that so um, to lose about 40 gigs is okay for me especially if it means it's gonna you know uh, make the hard drive uh, be more reliable and more endurance and last longer and all that good stuff which is pretty important for um, you know SSDs yeah I definitely recommend device device um, in that situation where you're going from a smaller hard drive to a bigger hard drive. Whether it's an SSD or a mechanical hard drive, doesn't matter. Alright guys, see you later.